I'm Joshua LeBear, and I am the Executive Director of the Biodesign Institute at Arizona State University. Also the Director of the Virginia G. Piper Center for Personalized Diagnostics here. So I wear a number of little hats here at the Institute. I help guide the Institute and build the Institute in the various directions that we go for research and, and development of new ideas. I also lead a center, one of the centers in the Institute. That center is loosely built around early detection of disease and finding ways to treat illnesses. And then I'm a professor. I have a, my own laboratory and we do research, uh, again, largely around early detection of disease. So I, I grew up here in central Phoenix. We moved here from New York when I was five years old. Phoenix was a pretty quiet town back then. I used to say that it was a big city that thought it was a small town. I got around town, by the time I was a teenager, I got around town all the time by bicycle, which you could do. It's a flat city, so it's easy to ride around. Yeah, it was fun. When I finished high school and I decided to go to college, and having come from a big city that thought it was a small town, I decided to go to a small town that thought it was a big city. So I went to Berkeley, California, and I went to UC Berkeley as an undergraduate. At the time, I had no idea what I wanted to be. I was toying with the classic, you know, do I want to be a lawyer or do I want to be a doctor kind of conundrum. I took honors organic chemistry as a sophomore. We were going to do a multi-stage organic synthesis and we were going to work each week to advance it to the next level and we didn't know if it was going to work or not. It had never been done before. Standing on the edge of human knowledge and facing out into the dark and saying, I want to shed light out there. I want to move out into that unknown space and put knowledge there. That bug bit me hard and it has never left. It's, it's why I do what I do. And it was at that point that I decided that it wasn't gonna be enough to be a doctor. I really wanted to be a researcher. And, and so that's the reason I did the MD-PhD program. My mother passed away from breast cancer. Her cancer was found late. In retrospect, looking at the one that the diagnosis was made from and looking at the earlier one, there was a hint of something there. Not enough that anyone would have called it, but it was there. If they had had a blood test, like the kind of one that we're developing, maybe that would have made a difference. Maybe that would have been picked up that much earlier and it would have had an impact. So it's certainly made me a much stronger believer in the importance of early diagnosis and, and put a much bigger emphasis on breast cancer in the research I do. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. When the COVID-19 pandemic started, ASU was one of the first places in the U.S. to experience a case of this. No one ever got it from that student, but it was a wake-up call for us. A person in Maricopa County is in isolation after being diagnosed with the deadly virus that's spreading rapidly. It made us realize that this thing was real and we needed to pay attention to it. And how are we gonna test our population? We realized that one of the projects that we had already been doing the year earlier used, a tech, used the same technology that was used for detecting the, the COVID-19 virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. All right, all right, have a good Thursday, everybody. Let's go save some lives. You know, we realized that, that testing was the key to understanding where this virus was going and that it was a deadly virus. And so I said, let's go save some lives as we broke up the meeting, as we got up to, to leave. I failed to say it one day and everybody came to me and said, no, you gotta say that every day. You gotta say that constantly. And so we, it became our kind of mantra. In this case, the goal was to save lives. And so every decision we made in that project was, which is the way that's gonna take us to save the most number of people, to identify the most number of cases, to get the answer out there. And so we made all of our decisions based on that principle. And that's why we stated it every time we needed. And so what began as a group of seven people meeting every day, seven days a week, quickly became over 130 people meeting every day, seven days a week. The entire community got involved. It was a spectacular thing to, to witness. It was that spirit around this university that was just phenomenal. We realize that solving problems is, is never easy. But nature has been solving problems for millions and millions of years. So generally at our institute, we like to use nature as our inspiration. We look there and see how, how did nature solve that problem and can we learn something from that to solve it in our own way. What we need to do is bring together faculty from different disciplines and get them working and speaking in common languages so they can solve those problems. And that's I believe a unique aspect to Biodesign Institute. 
I don't know of any other place that organizes itself in that fashion. The Institute covers a very broad range of topics. Everything from cancer to developing new particle accelerators, figuring out ways to quickly diagnose COVID-19, huge, huge immunotherapies, virotherapies, sustainability, purifying water. And all of that reflects this broad vision that was brought to our Institute when President Crow first came to ASU, this idea that we need to look at the problems that are affecting humanity, and for that matter, the planet, and solve those problems. Fundamentally, we're a university, and so we have students throughout our entire operation. Obviously, almost all, if not all, of the labs in, in the Institute have graduate students who are working towards their either doctorates or in some cases their master's degrees, participating on projects, hopefully designing some of those projects and developing new knowledge. We also have a huge number of undergraduates who usually volunteer in our labs and are doing all kinds of elements to what we do. I still enjoy the multiple roles that I play here. I enjoy teaching. I don't think I would ever give up my laboratory work. I think what we do in the lab is just too much fun. The hardest thing I do, making discoveries and running a team and getting funding and getting the papers out is a lot of work, but I think we're committed to developing new technologies. I have the best job at ASU, really, because I get to hunt down and hire really brilliant scientists who are solving huge problems and get to work with them on a daily basis. As we move forward, I think we need to continue to expand and grow, finding new areas to solve. But I also think that as we, we continue to grow, we also need to fill in the intervening space between all of those different centers and build more connections among them. I think a key aspect of the Institute moving forward is how do we build an integrated institute where the different centers can work together more, solve bigger problems as bigger teams. What we need to do is keep developing minds and scientists and engineers to, to, to focus on those problems and solve them.